I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May everyone bow their ears, please. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to thee this afternoon to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all the blessings that you have shared and poured upon us. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you for your precious Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please watch over us as we go about taking care of the town business this afternoon, mm -hmm. trying to keep our town safe and beautified. Please let our decisions be good decisions. Guide us in our thoughts and in our words that we say. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, man, a sample of the approval of the minutes for our special meeting on July the 25th and our regular meeting on July the 20th. Excuse me, July the 12th. Well, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carried. All right, the next is our committee reports, and the first one is our administrative committee that's chaired by <coughs> Councilman Hyde. Thank you, Mayor Shallons. We have two matters to present tonight. Uh, the first matter is a discussion on the elected official stipend study, and uh, staff has been doing some uh, research on that, and uh, Corey and Dwayne, if I could just hand it over to you and get us some more information as we requested at our uh, committee meetings two weeks ago. Yes, um, thank you, Councilman Hyde. Uh, myself and uh, Dwayne have been working on this over the past two weeks. At this time, um, we found um, uh, nothing to present to Council. Um, we'd like to request that we continue to work on this review. We've actually reached out uh, to the UNC School of Government's listserv to get some additional data to show what other counties and town municipal systems are doing. Um, in addition to what we've already received from the North Carolina League of Municipalities, we want to make sure that our data is thorough. Um, we hope to provide some type of update, update at the August 22nd meeting, um, and if not, the first meeting in September. But at this time, um, we have nothing new to present other than we are continuing to work on that. Okay, with that being said, I would make a motion to table this until the August 22nd committee meeting. Second. Okay, we we'll have a motion to second. Any comments or if not, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Mayor, the uh, second and last item that we have to uh, report on, and uh, we may be in a position to have a uh, vote on this, is uh, the approval of the Hyperreach emergency call system as it was presented to us two weeks ago. The hyper-reach um, emergency call system is a system by uh, telephone and text we can notify citizens of uh, important events in the town and also uh, if there are emergencies, hurricanes, uh, things of public interest, we can notify the town's uh, residents via telephone and also via, via text. And um, it seems like it's something that we should do. It seems like it would be an easy way to get uh, information out quickly to our citizens, and in light of that, I would move that we approve moving forward with this system. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carried. That concludes our business, Mayor. Thank you, sir. All right, the next is our finance committee, and that's chaired by Councilman Dixon. And we have one thing on we discussed in detail, the uh, Golden Leaf Grant, Right thing, a budget amendment, and um, we'll just send that for you. Because know. we need a vote on it, yeah. Yes, we do. Okay, I'll let them change. I'll motion. make that motion, yeah. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. That's it for the finance committee. Okay, thank you. And the next is our new business. Uh, we, under that, we have a resolution for former police chief John Parrish. Uh, on July the 12th, 2022, the town of Eden received information from State Senator Bob Steinberg, the office, about a dedication request from the family of former Eden police chief John D. Parrish. 
The family was interested in having a roadway or a bridge in Edenton named after the late police chief Perry. Chief Perry served the town of Edenton for 27 years. 20, 20 years of that was as chief, and before his retirement in 1988. And I would like to thank the family of Chief Parish for bringing that up and for being here with us tonight. Uh, and we certainly welcome you to the thank meeting you. tonight. Uh, you want to discuss that for a um, Yes, yeah, so um, we did work with the family. The staff has worked with the family over the last couple of weeks to try to get everything together to present to um, North Carolina DOT. What staff found is that um, for law enforcement dedications, those are only reserved um, for bridges. And so, as you know, the town's bridges are all, all uh, owned or within the right of way for um, the North Carolina uh, Department of Transportation. So, um, knowing that, one of the things in addition to uh, the application that North Carolina DOT requires um, for this formal dedication is a resolution on behalf of the town um, showing its support. Um, and also, uh, one of the things that, that we will be providing in that application is a letter of support um, from Chowan County as well as um, from the town of Beaton in the form of this resolution. Um, so at this time, we do have family members here um, and Senator Steinberg and his wife are also here. Um, but at, what we're recommending is that council approve the resolution honoring Edenton Police Chief John D. Parrish for his years of service. I think that's very well deserved. We all remember Police Chief Parrish. He was here for a long time and did a great job. And we uh, certainly support this issue. So uh, we're open for Mayor, I make a move, motion that we uh, approve the resolution. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> it's a great thing to do this. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. He did a great job as police Thank chief during those years he was here. What was it 20, 20 years as police chief? 20 years as police chief. 27 years total. Yeah. About 21. 20, oh, the police chief. Okay. Any further discussion? And, and I just would like to thank Senator Steinberg's office and the family for helping us. Um, this was the, the first time the uh, new staff had had been through this process and were somewhat familiar with it. Um, but uh, thank you for your patience. And we thank y'all very much for doing this for us, Bob. Yes, we do. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Corey, when will the signs go up? This will be at Pembroke Creek. The yes. bridge crossing is the bridge at Pembroke Creek along the, um, in between the 500 and 600 block of West Queen. Um, I do not have a time <coughs> frame now. There is some time that this will be in DOT's hands for their board to It's got to be approved on our first. So there's no way we can give them. Mayor, once, it, once it's approved, will it be, will be assigned to each side street? Yes. Just, okay, yes. It's coming up. That's the only way it is. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say the Bible. Say it. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank y'all so much. I'm sorry. I said thank y'all so much. We thank you. Appreciate it. I think it's well deserved. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. So they are reappointed. And Mayor, one thing to add there, I know that um, for since the beginning of the 2022 calendar year, we've struggled with this, uh, trying to get some of these boards and appointments um, satisfied for the reappointment or for new candidates. And I want to thank Wayne. He's really worked really hard to try to um, get those applicants in, go through that list, and really find out where we had the most need for vacancies, where the most urgency was. And I think Wayne's done an outstanding job um, getting this list really dwindled down. So and we still have more vacancies. Yes. Um, and we're just doing that at kind of a priority basis, filling yes. those. Yes, that's correct. Okay, the next item, uh, item C, is a budget amendment for Phase 1 America Rescue Plan. Uh, this budget amendment is to allocate the remaining balance of the ARPA grant received on uh, fiscal year 21-22. The budget amendment is for a, a total of $614,235.01 of the original $735. $735,235. This amendment will allow the town of Easton to use the funds originally allocated in the fiscal year 2023 budget for capital outlay projects that are necessary to improve the quality and services offered to our citizens. You want to have any further comments on that? Yes, Mayor. So just to, to break that down further, uh, the, the budget amendment that we are discussing tonight is the remaining balance of the first allocation um, from the ARPA grant. Um, uh, up until this point, there's only been uh, roughly $121,000 uh, spent uh, from that first allocation. Um, one of the things that the finance director for Jimmy Smith and I had worked on after we completed this year's budget was to consider some of the items that had been removed. Um, from the budget when we consider rate increases and tax increases and things of that nature. Um, so this transfer uh, totaling the $614,235.01 of that, um, the general fund will receive $279,235.01. The water and sewer fund will receive $300,000 and the power bill fund will receive $35,000. Um, uh, in terms of the capital projects that we are looking at uh, bringing back to council for approval um, after the budget amendment will include um, the purchasing of the new fire station property, the purchasing and outfitting of an additional two new police vehicles, the purchasing uh, of the remaining uh, automated water meters for the phase two completion that will complete the entire town uh, for what we started this past year. Um, and also we will be able to pay multiple roadways throughout town. Um, to begin with, we have identified roads that we would like to try to um, go for before our winter season approaches. Um, we have identified three streets um, that are in, that are in an, an, uh, an immediate need of repair. Um, those would be Tyler Lane, uh, West Freemason, as well as Cypress Drive. Those three roads um, we're going to start on before the end of this calendar year. Um, this does not include the list that we had previously discussed, um, but based on the remaining funds and the most immediate needs of the town, these are where the finance director as well as myself um, felt like the um, improvements were most needed. What was the third one? Tyler Lane, West Freemason, and Cypress Drive. So, so Corey, there's a good chance maybe October, November, these, these we're hoping to have these done by the end of September. I have gave Public Works a deadline of October 1. And when's our next opportunity to get another round of paving? Because I know there are a lot more streets in town so than those three that need attention. Building to, uh, to this list was a master list that we had discussed previously, which is what we had got total cost for, which was around 27 different roads to identify um, what we'll have to do um, throughout the winter is to get together a bid packet to do a larger paving similar to what we've done in our first and second rounds of street resurfacing. Um, well, do we have some loans that are going to be paid off in the next six to 12 months? Um, I, I do not know, but I will follow up with Virginia to find out. I think there are some that are nearing the end of their 
return so system. Yes. I think it's two years. Yes. I, I, I asked Virginia about that some time ago. I don't think she told me two years. Okay. This one did. Next one is. But what I would be glad to provide. Don't hold is, me uh, to that, but I think that's right. Uh, debt service um, summary sheet. Right. That we have had in the past, as well as what outstanding lines and the remaining <coughs> terms of our charges are. And uh, Virginia and I can provide that for the August 22nd. I'd like to keep those streets at the forefront. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, and, and I know the cotton mill, the ones that weren't done, I thought they were doing that. That, 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 that this will finish up the cotton mill, correct? At, at Elliott and um, uh, Phillips? No, we we, received, we had to go back to the contractor to get some revised quotes okay. on the remaining streets from the cotton mill. Um, and when we, when we look at um, the list and the dollar amount that's actually moved for this round, um, we would plan on doing those in the spring. Spring. Yeah. <coughs> Do they look though at that place that holds water so badly? Yes. I'm worried about ice in the winter and, and, and that thing holds so much water. And part of the reason that we wanted to lay the paving is we did do some stormwater improvements in that area and add some additional okay. piping in the catch basin okay. um, to, to reduce that. Okay. But, but those are on our list for the spring. Where is that? That's old. Right by the old mill no office. And uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, and this does require action tonight, so I will entertain a motion to follow up on this. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And the next one is a budget amendment for phase two. America Rescue Plan. Uh, this budget amendment will allow the town of Eden to receive the second phase of the ARPA grant in the amount of $735,235. This grant was received on July 29th of 2022. These funds will be placed in contingency until the town of Eden requests that it be allocated for additional capital outlay projects. The finance director of Virginia Smith and town manager Corey Gooden Recommend that the council approve the budget amendment as presented. You want to comment on that? Um, just, just briefly, the um, the allocation that we just discussed in the previous budget amendment um, was during our fiscal year 21 slash 22. This is the second half of the ARPA funds that we received that would be um, in, entered into this year 22 slash 23 budget. So the 1.3 million grant that the town of Edenton received um, as a result of the, the COVID uh, preparations and monies. This is the second half of that. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. So move, Mayor. We have a motion we have a second. Second. have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And the next is another budget amendment for the Harbor Town Ferry Project. This budget amendment will rescind the original amendment dated 228 of 2022 as per the attached email in the agenda packet. The Town of Eden will no longer be a physical agent for this project. <coughs> a rescinding amendment is necessary for compliance with the LGC statutes as the budget will be reduced by this amount. Finance Director Virginia Smith and Town Manager Corey Gooden recommend that the Council approve the budget amendment as presented. No comment? Second. I'll entertain a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yeah, just talk to what you did. Well, what, what, uh, something obviously has changed. We, we were going to be uh, responsible for the single funds, and now it's like maybe it's going to a not for profit or another group. Yes, that is what's going on. So the, um, <coughs> the town will still be the fiscal agent for the $500,000 contingency, which is what pays the nonprofit for any services. Um, the 500000 because of some of the um, restrictions that the town has as far as purchasing, um, we did receive guidance from the local government commission um, that we would need to rescind this and actually. Um, transfer those funds to the nonprofit um, for some of the purchasing requirements uh, for the project. And so what this will allow the nonprofit to do
do is, is to um, manage and oversee the funds directly related to the launching of the operation. Um, so the town will still be the, the fiscal agent for the contingency, which pays out for the administrative services um, for this project to make sure that that's done uh, correctly. As far as the property and asset acquisition, um, this will be funneled through that nonprofit. And who is the nonprofit? Um, the Ferry Town Project, no yeah. FC. And they'll be handling the other municipalities as well. Yes. But yes. And that was a requirement and a request from the local government commission, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And not the legislature. That, that's correct. Does the timeline this project still about two years away? Yes, um, mm -hmm. we should see some um, movement along the harbor before the end of this calendar year, and we're hoping to have, we're still optimistic to have um, the first vessel in, or at least some testing um, also before the end of the calendar year. But I would imagine that services for um, passengers would not start till uh, calendar year 23. Do we have enough existing depth out there to accommodate the, the ferry? Yes. So we don't have to go to the delay and the expense and all that of uh, dredging that trip. That's correct. No, sir. We, we are, um, our facilities will handle those vessels. Do you think we're a lot further ahead on this issue than other municipalities? I would say very much so. Then uh, this doesn't change Edenton still being um, one of the, the uh, home port um, for these vessels to begin with. That's why most of the testing and tuning um, and pre-launch will, will be housed here in Edenton Bay. Okay, I'll let take a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the motion is carried. And that is most of that business of the budget amendments. Okay, now it's time to, uh, for items considered timely and important. Anybody up here got anything that they want to bring forward to the council? Uh, could we just get an update on the water, what happened, and just tell that to, so everybody knows what it, you know, what happened and how it got fixed to the repairs here yeah, this yeah. past weekend. Um, so um, the town had its fire inspection um, within the last 60 days, and one of the things that had been identified was low pressure along our fire hydrants on the, on the west side of South Wall between West Queen and West King. Um, under further investigation, that we had found that some valves had failed to close along the west side of, of, of South Broad Street. Um, those valves needed to be replaced, or, or actually removed and replaced. Um, so Public Works did that work Sunday morning early. We had two new valves cut in um, on the water main here along South Broad. Um, we had a, a deadline of noon with JLA as far as our bacteria samples to be tested. Um, we did not meet that deadline because of some obstacles that the guys ran into. Um, the test results were turned in a little later than normal. We did receive those and revoke the boil water notice this morning at 5.58 p.m. Um, as far as public, uh, uh, public knowledge, um, we did do an all-call for uh, roughly 140 accounts that we have that should be affected within the area, um, as well as we did hand deliver the boil water notices um, to residents or businesses, and if someone was not there, they were actually taped or posted on the entry door to that business. Yeah. Um, and, um, but if everything is clear, we acknowledge that this morning. We um, posted first thing this morning, letting residents know that that board order advisory had been removed. Um, uh, great success, though. The um, improvements that we saw did correct the um, fire system review and inspection correct the issues that we had identified um, for fire safety along South Broad Street. So um, the Club Works guys did an outstanding job of that, identifying the problem, getting those repaired. And so we're in a lot better shape now than we were 72 hours ago. So, according to all the supplies and equipment you had on hand, yes. you didn't have to order it. Yes. So you could take care of things right yes. And our staff was able to do it. 
Uh, yes, the only uh, the only contract services we have is actually do live tap to actually cut in the valve on the live line. Okay. So the, all the repairs, all the prep work, um, all the replacement, that's all done in house. Um, and we are still working on the training for the guys to actually be able to clean the valves themselves and not have to outsource this. DDE also set out more water. Yes. Uh, all the way up to the well, I know some one of the restaurants was flooded today and said due to water issues. Is that related to this? Or yes. That? Yes. Um, uh, those restaurants cannot operate when there's a uh, boil water advisory. Now they can once the boil water advisory is removed. Okay. And that's a uh, health code issue. Mayor, I just want to say something for Corey. It's a project that been working on for a few, few years and he made the announcement at that last meeting that we would get started on it. And it did. First of all, first of August they started and they completed it. We paved the surface. Uh, that project was a drain project, uh, a, bigger, a bigger drain. Uh, we had a few houses that was on that ditch line that were getting flooded. It's flooding out of air conditions and all that stuff. But uh, we got it done and squared away, and I hope the neighborhood will be less flooded now that we get it done. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank, Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just want to reiterate what Corey uh, said earlier. Uh, I want to thank Corey, and definitely I want to thank Dwayne for all the work they put into uh, having persevered uh, on this job, but all the work we put into uh, um, filling boards and, and commissions, and I know we still have a few more to do, but I know it took a lot of work, and thank you for what you've done. And I also want to thank the citizens for volunteering to uh, uh, get on these boards and, uh, and work with the team. That says a lot for our citizens. So thank you. Yeah. Mayor, I don't need thing. I, I, I think that one of the greatest things that happened last week was the Decatur um, project. I was, I was in Cleveland getting some um, testing, so I couldn't be here. But I mean, it's been about a 20-year project, almost 20-year project. And when we started, we thought it was going to be $600,000. It's gone up to $2.45 million. And it's been one of the best public, private, um, projects that I've ever seen where the whole community has come together to fix something that's number one irreplaceable but number two that took everybody in this community to do it and um, we, you know, we owe a lot of uh, a debt of gratitude to our legislators who were able to secure a two million dollar grant we um, really got on the right track by having the fund for sacred places which is a national trust um, project to give us about four hundred some thousand dollars that had a lot of stipulations on how to get get the project to the point that it could be funded. And then we had a whole bunch of local private donors and then we had a we had people that have been working on this thing for a decade and they have been you know, so it's a best example of this entire community coming together to do something absolutely wonderful for everybody. For, for nothing but they wanted the world to be a better place. And I just think of, of all the things that I've seen in a long time, that Cadish Church with its 17 Tiffany windows getting totally restored is, is an example of how wonderful this community is. So thank you all for all being there. I was so sorry I couldn't be there. I've been, I've been working on this thing for now. <laughs> so anyway, and you know, I think you see Barbara, Willie, um, or any of the Drews, yeah, you need to just give them a hug and thank them. And I'm sorry, Audrey Bond, but they have to be here because she's been working on it for so long. And it was a good so, turnout for it, yeah. too. Yeah, safe, yeah. Yeah, 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 people there. The, the, three, the three Drews have been the glue to hold that project together. Yeah. So. Anybody else up here? Okay, we'll open it up for public comment. Uh, this morning we have a three minute time limit on that, so anybody that wants to speak can have signed up for it. And please you. come up to the podium and state your name and address. Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, I do have the list here. Um, when I called, if you're interested, 
Um, you know, steel and speed. You know, please let me know. I mean, first, we have Mike Dange, 100 in the landing. Good evening, folks. I stand up here in opposition to moving this magnificent memorial we have across the street. This is not a monument. It's a memorial. Make no mistake about it. U.S. Code, Title 38, Chapter 15, Subchapter I, General, Paragraph 1501 says, The term Civil War Veterans includes a person who served in the military or naval forces of the Confederate States of America during the Civil War, and the term of active military or naval service includes active service in those forces. This is a Veterans Memorial, people. Anybody who would stand to move this monument and as it is a veteran should be ashamed of themselves. The memorial at the foot of Broad Street is a veteran memorial. Plain and simple, no matter how hard people try to make it about something that died 150 years ago. That was a dark time in our history, our shared history nonetheless. It stands as a memorial to over 600,000 Southern veterans, including over 48,000 North Carolinians, both black and white. It's estimated that 19% of the Confederate Navy was black, including Benjamin H. Gray, a free black merchant seaman who joined the Confederate Navy at Wilmington and served aboard the CSS Albemarle during the Battle of Plymouth, living out the rest of his life in Bertie County. So what would be the next to go? The Bell Battery? All the historical homes in Edenton that had house servants? People are not offended by this until they were relatively recently when they were told by outsiders to be offended. What's to happen blotting out our history when a hundred years from now, when some offended socialists are offended by that black wall in Washington containing 58,000 names of my brothers and sisters on it? That a hundred years from now be 150 years from Vietnam. Follow the law of North Carolina that the town's own attorney has advised counsel at least twice on the illegality of moving that memorial. I stand for veterans who can no longer stand for themselves. Thank you very much. Next I have Gail Bull, uh, 226, 226 White Landing. I stand up here as a female military veteran, and I think it's a disgrace to remove or cover up any war monument of any of our deceased veterans. It doesn't matter what war they're fighting in. If you remove the Confederate monument, which is to honor our Confederate dead, then all other monuments for all the other branches and wars or conflicts need to be removed. That's Vietnam, Korea, World War I, World War II, Iraqi freedom, Desert Storm, all of them. Civil War was history and is part of our her a part of the heritage of our county, state, and nation. Are we going to remove parts of history just because a few people don't like it? Why do you want the monument removed but don't say a word when they have the pilgrimage and have visitors going through the homes of slave owners all over Edenton? Every home that is on the pilgrimage tour was at one time or another a slave owner's home. If you want the monument removed, you should also have street names renamed, all historical markers removed, because somewhere someone doesn't like it. There's not a single person allowed here tonight that is or has been a slave or slave owner. If you do away with the history of our great nation, we are apt to repeat it. Is this what you want? That monument has not hurt a single person and will not hurt a single person. And it's been in our county for a long time to honor our family and friends that fought and died for what they believed in at that time. The only people that it seems to hurt are the people that have moved in, that's left their home, and now they want to come down here and try to make our home like the place they left. If you don't like the way we live here, which is the only home some of us have ever known, and all I can say is the road at least by to where you come from, so you can get on the road and go somewhere, but leave us in our history alone. God bless you, our great nation, and our Confederate dead. Next, I have G. 
Jerry McRoy. folks giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. I am not an Edenton citizen. I'm not a Chewan County citizen. But I have been here before. If you don't mind a compliment, I came here last September 11th by invite through a gentleman that I know that arranged an event here. We had a presentation over at the old courthouse. We did a trolley tour through town. My wife and I went through the Barker house. And we enjoyed being here. And when you open your meeting tonight, your pledge of allegiance and your sincere prayer to start the meeting on, I thought was excellent. Thank you for being that type of body. But I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of two gentlemen, Private William Asa McRoy, who is my great-great-grandfather on my father's side, and Private Hanson Leonard Peterson, who was a great-great-grandfather on my mother's side. They were both Confederate veterans. I'm sure you are aware of Chapter 100 of the North Carolina Statutes, specifically 100.2.1, Protection of Monuments, Memorials, and Works of Art. Being from Pitt County, our monument was removed in the middle of the night in June of 2020 after some ruckus downtown. The other things that were damaged, our, by the way, our monument wasn't damaged, but flagpoles on either side of the monument were hung off of and damaged. No one was ever prosecuted to my knowledge. But the other things that were damaged downtown were fine. Nothing was removed, but the Confederate monument was removed. So, it's been in secured, surveilled storage for two years after being taken down with the ruse of we're going to find a relocation site. We had two county commissioners to stand for the monument and seven against. So it's still in secure storage, supposedly. <clears throat> I like what these other folks have already said about Confederate military veterans. And you'll notice this, is, I agree, is a memorial. It says, to our Confederate dead. Those gentlemen stood for your town and your county and your state, if you're from North Carolina. 30 seconds. During one of the darkest <coughs> times in our nation. I implore you to leave that monument as is. It's in a beautiful setting. I love the flags around it in the square. It's a beautiful presentation. And I pray that you would consider the bravery and continue to honor and respect the veterans that fought for this area during 1861 to 1865. Thank you. Um, next I have Bill Paul. I'll pass until later on. James Brady. Speaker, and I don't like being here. However, if you think about history, good and bad, what happens when you take history away? People forget it. You're going to repeat it one way or another. I'm against slavery. I'm against racism 100%. What's happening in our country now is racism that's going on. It's tearing this country apart. This is a memorial, just like it said. My great-grandfather, of course, removed, didn't fight for slavery. He did fight for state rights. The Civil War was not all about slavery, as so many would have you think. It was a big issue. It was not the issue, and it was not why the southern states of the Confederacy was formed. Basically, it was over money, like most wars. The North had lost her cash cow, and they won state back. The dead who fought did not all fight for slavery. It offends some, some people, yes. Well, you offend me when you remove 
something that my grandfather fought for, that was not slavery. There's only two sides to the issue. I hope you guys do the right thing. Seems like the ones that got the loudest mouth in this country now, if there was. The rest of the people sit back and say nothing. And I don't like standing up here saying anything. Use some common sense. I don't have any degrees and stuff, but one thing I do have is a little bit of common sense. And to remove this memorial is a disgrace. And if you do it, you should be ashamed of yourself. I, for one, am ashamed of you if you do that. Most people in here, a good portion of us, are veterans just like I am. I didn't believe in war in Vietnam, but I was called over at home. I didn't sit back at a desk either. But anyway, think about what you're doing. You destroy history, you have to repeat it. Thank you, sir. Next, I have John Mitchner. Jesse Rivers. Good evening, Town Council. I also am going to speak on a different subject, although I've been before this council at least once, maybe twice, and before the county commissioners um, asking that this Confederate statue be moved. I'm not going to say more about that right at this time. I want to compliment and, and thank the town council and everyone involved for the, um, the wonderful uh, work that was, has been done at Kadish. I also want to thank you for, from the past work that you did in restoring the D.F. Walker school building, high school, former high school, as currently in use as a boys and girls club. But I do want to talk briefly about history. I, short term history, I've been a member uh, of the Racial Reconciliation Group of Edenton 
We meet every week on Thursday evenings. It's open to anyone. And we've been meeting for eight years. And I won't go into any detail about that. I'd love to tell you how, how important that group is and has been to me. But what I want to share with you tonight is uh, a little history. And may I give a handout to you or no? Sure. We've learned a lot about um, black history in our um, group meetings. And I want to use my time as quickly as I can make this around to inform the group. last 152 years since the Civil War time, there have been 25 black massacres. If you have any more, if anybody over here, I don't know if there are any more. Okay. This is lifted from an article that, or, that you can, uh, I'd be glad to give you the reference. This is not my research. But it, it shows you... 30 this, seconds, this, Ms. Rivers. Excuse me? 30 seconds. Oh, okay. We are for racial equity. And so we feel strongly, not we, the reconciliation group, excuse me, but we would like the statue moved, not removed from our town, but just moved so that, that every race, all races, feel welcome in this area. Thank you. Um, next I have uh, Bob Kirby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Councilman. On December 3rd, 2018, in my first official act as a county commissioner, I swore an oath to support and maintain the Constitution and the laws of the United States and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. It was an oath very similar to the one I took on May 19, 1978, when I was commissioned as an ensign in the United States Navy upon graduation from the Virginia Military Institute. These two oaths bear a poignant significance to the ongoing debate that this body is having relative to the Confederate monument or memorial that stands outside this meeting room. Earlier this year, Edenton Town Council adopted a resolution to transfer ownership of the memorial to Chowan County. Folks assembled here may wonder why Chowan County has not publicly taken up the debate on accepting this gift from the town. The reason is quite simply contained within the first oath that I previously noted. I, as well as my fellow commissioners, are sworn to uphold the laws of North Carolina, and there is a North Carolina law which, on its surface, appears to prohibit the town from removing or relocating the memorial. Chowan County has asked our county attorney to research all legal matters carefully and thoroughly and to provide her opinion, and our board of commissioners awaits her advice. Please stand by. I had not intended to publicly weigh in on this issue until the county board of commissioners takes it up at a future date. However, increasingly inflammatory and impatient rhetoric in the form of emails, which I have received from several individuals, and in particular, their last resolution, which is to urge Edenton Town Council to cover the memorial with a tarp, have prompted me to come here this evening and speak to you. I do not want to see this council caught up in the heat of the moment and take the unwise stance of covering this memorial. This monument was built and dedicated to honor the memory of the Confederate dead, both black and white, of Chowan County. I emphasize that it was not intended or limited in any way to solely honor the fallen from the town of Edenton, but to all of Chowan County. If this council decides to take unwarranted, the premature action to cover the memorial, you will be considered as desecrating the memorial, which has been entrusted to your care. The second oath that I noted earlier in my remarks draws focus to the fact that as a commissioned naval officer, I am a veteran. I was able to voluntarily serve my country. 
Some of the soldiers to whom this memorial is dedicated did not serve voluntarily. They were involuntarily drafted into service. Their government at the time passed laws which required their service literally at the point of a bayonet or the muzzle of a gun. Many went off to fight and died in places like Chancellorsville, Virginia, Sharpsburg, Maryland, and Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. The dead were often never accounted for, and the only way for their mothers, wives, children, and even generations to this very day to remember and memorialize their life and death was through memorials such as this. As a fellow veteran, I consider it my sacred duty to honor and remember those who fought both North and South, especially with the knowledge and understanding that their service might not have been voluntarily voluntary. I'm going to close real quickly. Otherwise, you just have to hear it when I sit with the gavel at the Board of Commissioners, if you just bear with me just a second. In closing, as always, I sincerely thank you for doing what is often a thankless job. Believe me when I say I know. Join me in my fervent prayer that cooler heads will prevail as we collectively find our way forward. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for all who have spoken. Uh, we will take all of this into consideration and do what we need to do. But as Commissioner Kirby says, we have to abide by the law. Our attorneys have told us we can't do anything at this point. The county attorney has said the same thing, and we're under, we have to abide by the law. I know everybody doesn't have to, but we do. And as long as I sit up here, that's what we're going to do, is abide by the law. Okay? All right. So we've got that behind us now. So at this time, we're going to uh, go into... Uh, Closed session for NCGS 143-318-11 to conduct performance evaluation on our town manager. So at this time, we'll ask all the public if you will to please exit, and we will go into the closed session. Mr. Mayor, I'm out of order, and may I ask one question? Absolutely. Who owns legally that memorial? Who owns it? Can you answer that? I cannot. I'm, I'm just curious. Really. I, I Good. cannot answer Anybody that. Anybody purchase the square where it's sitting? What happened? <laughs> is, is there a price <laughs> you would put on the square where it's sitting? Are we yeah. Could yeah, it be sold? No, we no. cannot. Thank you. Uh, we'll go back into the general session. Uh, I won't you make that statement. <laughs> uh, do you want to go out and disclose it? I'll make a motion to adjourn, or did you want me to make any? Uh, oh, they, 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 was, yeah, we there's no action. Again. There's no action that was taken in closed session that needs to be reported or voted uh, in open session. And um, I think there's a consensus that concludes our business for the night. Yes, sir. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so I have a motion to second. We are adjourned. <laughs>